Okay, welcome again to Two Finger Banjo in Seven Essential Steps, a uh, crash course for the total beginner. Um, this video, real quick, I'm just gonna cover a few things that are good to know before you get started picking your first string, sort of the things, the burning questions you might have in your mind. First one, uh, common question is what kind of banjo do you need? The great news is any kind of banjo. Um, that's true of every style of banjo, claw hammer, three finger, bluegrass, scrugs, whatever. People tend to get dogmatic about certain things, uh, or they feel like a tradition, tradition means you should be using one particular style. Um, I certainly think you should use whatever banjo you want. The great thing about two finger ba thumb lead, there is no dogma. It's one of those things where anything goes. Um, you'll see me probably be paying, playing both kinds of banjos in, this, in these uh, videos. So right now I have an open back banjo. Sometimes I play on that. Sometimes I'll play on a resonator banjo. Use whatever you have available. What kind of strings should you use? So I typically play with steel strings. I use the Diodario light uh, gauge banjo strings with the Phosphor Bronze 4th when I can find it. I'll place a link to those strings in the video description should you want to pick those up. If you have a banjo with Nile gut strings though, that will work great and will sound fantastic two finger thumb lead style as well. Or if you have natural gut, go for it as well. Doesn't matter, we'll be tuning to the same pitches regardless. So uh, choose whatever uh, string uh, you would like or whatever you have on hand. Do you have to be able to read music? That's a question that sometimes I get. The answer is absolutely no. So the banjo is uh, an, a by ear tradition passed along by ear. There is a type of notation called tab that is used to help convey uh, uh, arrangements. And uh, we'll cover that later in the course, but we won't be uh, using that initially. So we will be using a combination of visual diagrams and our ears. Uh, like I said in the first vi video, one of the things you're going to be learning in this course uh, is you're going to be developing your ear and learning how to pick uh, melodies out by ear so that ultimately you can uh, you can pick out and play your own arrangements by ear, something anybody can do. It just takes a step-by-step -step process, which we'll get started with uh, in this particular course. Do you need to play with picks? So another burning question people have, another uh, reason why playing this non-dogmatic style is so great, it doesn't matter. You can do either one, whatever you like. Uh, and maybe, you know, if you, if you think you might be playing in bluegrass settings or you really want to learn bluegrass banjo at some point, it may be a good idea to start practicing with picks. Um, but you can play both ways. I play both ways. A lot of times practicing on my own, I'll play without picks. And many times there are songs uh, that, that I play that I prefer to play without picks especially if I'm playing and singing on my own. Um, so you can do either. So bare fingers um, don't really need a nail. You're really just picking with the flesh of your fingers when you are um, playing with your bare fingers. But you can also use picks. And when I do, uh, I usually use Dunlop mediums for my thumb pick. And I have Sammy Sheeler picks for my uh, finger pick. So metal for my index finger and a uh, plastic uh, thumb pick for my thumb. And lastly, how do you hold the banjo? So for this style and for most styles, rest the ban I tend to rest the banjo in my lap, so the pot kind of sitting between my legs. My arm is over the top of the banjo, putting a little bit of downward pressure on it. And just like that, the head is, I mean, the um, banjo is stable, right? And then I'm gonna play, we'll cover the hand position in the next video, but that's it. Um, if you would like, my banjo does have a strap, you can place a strap on, give you a little bit of extra stability, you need to adjust it so that you get the right angle. Um, so I like this position, middle of the lap, kind of a 45 degree angle, but there are many times where I'll be like this or, or move it all around. And, and um, so being it, ultimately you'll want to have some flexibility, but that's kind of the one to kind of uh, start with is that that should feel the, the most comfortable to have it kind of at that 45 degree angle resting in between your lap. Um, sometimes, with, especially with an open back banjo, less so with a resonator, I will put something under my left leg to raise that thigh up a little bit so that, uh, the, the bit, so that it helps to keep this um, angle up. And so that's another thing. So if you have something to put your, my, your I may have said leg, but put your, rest your foot on to bring your foot up just a little bit, uh, that tends to help as well. Okay, so those are the main things I think to know before getting started. Anything else we'll be covering in the context of each of these uh, videos. And so I will see you in the next one.